what is good good people so uh I wanted to share bits and pieces of this um I believe this is on James True's channel uh this is B Benjamin Balderson I think is his name the heathen not for sure who this is uh <laughs> her name uh I think the place they're at is called Rhinebeck or something along those lines. I will give a link to this vid uh, video. I, I definitely recommend it. Um, the, the, as as with most everything, I recommend and share, um, offer up. Um, it, it's in so doing. Uh, where my intent is, is for contemplation, uh, to potentially operate as a potentiator, uh, a catalyst for thought, for your own contemplation, to start to piece things together for yourself because that's where the true magic is once that starts to happen and then once we tap into other beings who are doing the same thing and then we help each other uh, with the puzzle pieces There's so much here. Um, yeah, I only have a, a few places uh, that hopefully I remember. And then I have a oracle card. That's uh, very accurate. Uh, very timely. Especially considering, you know, uh, the the USA 2020 quarter <laughs> the bats and uh, you know the, the Spaniards uh, uh, the heat that's rising uh, and this is what we're getting into the, the alchemical process the caliente uh, raising the temperature higher, the heat, baby. So yeah, the, uh, the, these guys go into alchemy uh, beautifully, and I love how they tie it into uh, the feminine and masculine, and how those need to be merged and integrated so that the true medicine can seep into uh, our being. Now, where I have a huge concern, and it's not a concern, it's a desire uh, for, for humans to, to remember the perfection that has already been set up, and that is uh, the, the main thing about alchemy. is this thing that's wrapped around it. it is that we have to do things to a perfected system to make it more perfect and then she she i, I probably won't share it but she said it perfectly here what, what i'm trying to get at is that this is our divine right to perfect nature uh i, I just gotta keep rolling from that because otherwise that that's very very uh, deep seated corruption in mentality, and she's she's a very uh, bright being and person with, with her intellect and her fire, her gnosis. But to say something like that, 
addiction. That means that the corruption has sunk so deep into her mind that she's going to continue to dissect nature until uh, it, it she destroys herself. And, and this is the, the... What this system was designed to do is to disconnect you from your roots, from your heritage, your true story, history... Your story. The truth of it. And to get you to seek. Outside of you. To get you into a mentality. With this indoctrination system. That you have to perfect. A perfected system. That you can even do that. In the first place. And then. How to go about to do that. With the scientific method. But that has been corrupted. Into the. Scientology method. This, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the scientism method, rather. So we'll go through a couple things here, a couple ways to meld these two uh, feminine and masculine energies uh, together. Uh, into a holistic aspect of, of medicine. Which, not a whole lot needs to be done. Just, just an understanding of how things operate. The design, the template. And, to, and to, to really get into this, like, less is more. So, to sit back and observe the insights will, will begin to come about um, and, then, and then eventually sink in and be understood. So... Uh, sorry, sorry about the audio, like, it, it, it's going to be kind of loud sometimes, and I'll try to adjust, kind of soft sometimes. Here he's talking, he's, Benjamin is going to be talking about, uh, the cannabis plant, um, specifically. <laughs> and I wanted to share this, because I thought this was beautiful. Um. It goes right into like synchronicity for me, as well as uh, you know why people have such a strong reaction to potent medicine, specifically with cannabis. Why they get the munchies? What what is happening? Well, what is this reaction? So when you ingest that. You have created a void because, as I spoke of before, the feminine aspect of this is opening up channels. The masculine aspect aspect fills it. So when you feel hunger after having taken in terpene level oils, that hunger is truly a void. Your body's like, fill me. And once it's filled, then that hunger is no longer a thing. You no longer feel that. You feel satisfied. So part of that high that people actually enjoy quite a bit is an extreme void that they're feeling. And once filled with the salt side of the medicine, that actually dampens that high substantially, which is part of why recreationally it's not popular at all. Yeah, because uh, the recreational side is, is all about that, that high, the stimulus, the stimulant. Which is an extreme. It's a certain side of the polarity. So you have you have the feminine and masculine, and then we want that sweet spot right in the middle, and that's going to be combining uh, the, the the salts of the earth with the the ethers, the the, the more uh, crystalline nature. And you can do that through, you can call it cooking or alchemy.
There's, there's, there's so many methods to go about to, to reaching um, what what someone may may deem as a a, perf, a perfect product or a perfect uh, reaction, but uh, so much of this ties back into the mind, into the mentality. Because, like I tell people uh, frequently, is that whenever you're you're uh, doing fasting, the the effects of smoking marijuana uh, change drastically. And I'm not saying that you don't get the munchies. I'm saying that your body utilizes smoking uh, marijuana, cannabis. differently because whenever you're in a fasted state you're, you're you've opened up those uh and they talk about this I, I don't know if i'll share maybe i will in the next part here where she talks about opening up the cell level so that we, we um kind of detox the cell and then and then, we're, and then we're ready for the expulsion of uh the detox from the skin So the fasting potentiates, and I, I recommend fasting for um, before any kind of deep level uh, engagement with with strong medicine, especially with plant spirit medicines. The fasting is going to help clear your mind and get your intent where it needs to be, to what you truly want to gain from something, and also release because we have to have both we have to realize what it is we need to let go of so that our cup can become empty and we can fill it with gnosis so below, what the alchemists um, would do is they wish to carry the philosopher's stone. So the philosopher's stone is also the individual who's preparing the spagyrics. And, and that word that she used, I'm not for sure how it's pronounced, they went into this in the beginning, which is separating the salt uh, from the oils. And doing this by um, combustion and burning uh, a material into white ash and then, and then having access to the salt. And then recombining that with an extraction of, of the oil. And then Benjamin kind of went to, um, he, he started talking about combining that with the mother but he didn't. He never mentioned fermentation. But whenever you're talking about the mother, that's going to be talking about fermentation. So I will not disagree that the effect of what they're talking about is palpable, is real. Especially whenever you combine your intent, because this is kind of like clearing the 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 board of um, any kind of programming that's there. So you're, you're allowing a clean slate to, to begin to have a uh, program that, that you want to um, imbue and, and be embodied in the cell. But I will say that this process they're talking about is not necessary because they're talking about dissecting s s dissecting nature in order to find um, 
something inside of it to where they can perfect it even more and that's not that's not how our world has been designed that's not the template the template is first and foremost it's for you to figure out for your fucking self so anything I offer up is for contemplation like I said but the template is designed so that man human when I say man it's already there for you so they're talking about a process that happens and ingesting this alchemical process but the thing is the plant already does this to perfection and then it offers you up the perfect medicine from the fruit and from the flowers and from the pollen and they will go into you know how that process happens in the sun hitting uh, the plants and then releasing the uh, volatile oils or the terpenes um, was what he says and yeah that that's a part of it but that the perfection of it is that the plant responds the plant flowers and the pollens are released and uh, the breath is life and once we remember how to eat through our breathing then we're, we're going to become uh, ever closer to our origin points the mind has to be pure the idea is that you are an enlightened one because you have to be enlightened enough to know the as above so below the principles the the cycles the the way that this clock works in the sky the days you plant, the days you don't, the days you work, the days you rest, and the, even the way the waters are presented. All of these nuances means you have to, you're trying to carry the Philosopher's Stone, and the Philosopher's Stone also has the ideology of immortality, which means... So before she gets into that uh, immortality, just the idea of the Philosopher's Stone. The stones, the uh, the in infinity stones. This is an idea that is brought about from this idea of alchemy, and that we have to create a philosopher's stone that we aren't already the Philosopher's Stone, that it's not already inside of us. And yes, they, they talk about the mentality of it, and then Benjamin will go into, or, or he did at some point, that basically the true essence of the Philosopher's Stone is instant manifestation. So, like, you can't, you can't be ready to, to handle that until you're, you're at a point where every little thought and spoken word you you are well aware of the repercussions and that it will make come to manifest so you are crystal clear but not just crystalline but also as above so below your um, perfected in that middle ground, in the sweet spot. Mm. 
that they were ever trying to make perfection to such a degree because they believed that you could transcend the immortal, uh, the mortal to the immortal. So you could live in this ether plane, in this in between, forever. And And everything, all, comes down to experience what you are willing to access within yourself. So once you realize the spirit, the immortal essence of an aspect of what you are, and also the embodiment of that, that the embodiment has a template, it has a design, and as it is right now, that design rises, it's born, it flowers, and it goes back into the system, and by system I mean the nature, the material. Does that mean it was always that way? Does that mean that our mentality can't reach a point again to where we can unite the spirit with the materia and exist there eternally? Have we already done that? Have we already have have we decided that there is a uh, better way, a better system? What? What are you talking about? What could be better than immortalizing? Uh, grounding this immortal spirit and soul into the embodiment, into the flesh. Look around you. Nature is not designed that way. Which isn't to say that the spirit of nature is not designed that way. I'm talking about the physical aspect of it. It has the cycles. the rise and the fall. And, and I think there's uh, lineages still trying to perfect this to this day, right? Um, and maybe that... And this is why I talk about these lineages. I talk about the Vedic, uh, our, our true history, our true past, that, that it already was perfected. And then I'm going to... After this... I'm going to get into how we how got got so corrupted and degraded and allowed this to happen because if you choose to uh, tap into this um, ancestry then the question is going to arise if we used to be so much more uh, mentality and connectivity continuity uh, of our humanity and our relationship with spirit and soul and heart and the all that is how the fuck do we end up where we're at right now so but it the mastery that it would take is very precise and so we talk about it practically as if it's just a that is absolutely 
you know, accurate. <laughs> it, it's, it's, the precision is it, very, uh, fine, fine point and, and attuned. And maybe that's why we had to go through all this shit so that we could realize that when we got a little too precise and that somewhere along the way we lost sight of a free flow. We lost sight of the importance of honoring every little aspect and not holding one thing on high over anything else. Harmonizing all aspects. And honoring all processes and aspects. So, you know, maybe working with a master and learning, you know, this is when you combine this with that and this is when you don't. And this is how you unearth it properly to get that principle at the right time. And this is when you collect it from the ground and this is when you show it to the sun and when you don't. Mm -hmm. why, why you need it to be that master before you were even presented the Philosopher's Stone is because what the Philosopher's Stone is, is a peak of what it would be like to do, to finish the great work on yourself. Because the great work... And this, and this idea, though, and, and I mean, I, this, this was, whenever I was waking up, I was all, all into this and telling people, you know, what the great work was about. Absolutely all of this. But, now I'm realizing it's, it's so much an inside job. It's so much a remembrance of what was not just lost, not just destroyed, because the energy can't be destroyed. Memory can be um, diluted and subjugated into certain partitions. So what, what has happened is a corruption of truth and then a degradation of the f connection of the physicality of the female and the male, the masculine and the feminine, and then throwing so much information and garbage on top of truth that eventually it gets covered up. Let's see if I can find the last point here. That part's going to be a little bit louder because it's James speaking. Nope. Uh, psychopathic elite. Uh, okay, that's good. Which is valid, I'm just saying it is what you hear. The psychopathic elite are using ritual and timing to uh, do things to us. And I, I, I think the, the aperture of compassion truth there is, is that the people that we call elite, or that others call elite, are alchemists. They're all alchemists, which should tell you something. <laughs> and I wanted to mention this because um, I mentioned uh, the priests. Whenever I was talking about, I had a video about imagery and collective thought. I mentioned the priests and uh, beyond alchemists these priests are beyond occultism beyond esoterics 
They have information about the power of imagery, the power of the human capability to manifest and create. And then they took it to the level of, if we can degrade the vast majority of people and the mind and the body, and degrading the body is going to further degrade the mind, and if we can stay one step ahead of the projections of this degraded imagery, then we can still control the mentality of the human collective. And that has been the age of the occult that we are now coming out of. So, these priests were wannabe alchemists. They were alchemists in the corrupted sense. Because they did not do the alchemy within themselves. They did into, onto a point, but they still held, held that one part, that piece of self on high. Over the other aspects of the emotional capabilities that man has access to. So whenever pride and vanity is held just a little bit on high, that's going to throw everything out of alignment and into a chaotic spiral. Maybe alchemy is like a a pretty good skill to have. Like maybe understanding how these principles work. The time. Yes. Understanding the principles of true alchemy and integrating them. That that's going to be the, the the main thing about anything you come about and, and you learn on the outside. How deep and how willing are you to deeply integrate it to to become it i mean with the calendar with you with your own cycle with your friend cycle with, with the atmosphere around you last night the the <laughs> and then he goes he goes on to talk about uh Yeah, it's just very synchronistic because it, it's kind of something that happened with me whenever I was in like a, one of these shamanic circles and then spoke and then had uh, a fire just go crazy, um, be be illuminated and inflamed. Uh, and then he talks about, you know, uh, Benjamin speaking and then the moon kind of uh, transitioning during this perfect timing and yes so much uh, of this process is about um, divine timing but also not being subjugated or, or, or worshipping time especially um, the, the, the false clock that time uh, the, the you know Peter Pan and, and Captain Hook the the Hook's time, that's that's a false time. Whenever we get uh, super into synchronicities, uh, we tap into this divine timing, and it just happens. We we don't plan these things; they just spring about and happen in divine timing, divine rhyming. with our inner and outer worlds they harmonize so I'll share this card
Yep. It's the bat. And there's a reason why the bat was used as a scapegoat uh, for this uh, Spaniard flu. The, the Spaniard crown. Which is just a repeat. So much of what we go through is a repeated cycle, and uh, it, it's repeat and revamped, which is uh, also tied back into the bats, the vamping. Looking beyond fear, and that's something that just just before I uh, watched this, uh, Skyhopper was talking about fear, and then uh, Benjamin was talking about courage. So I mean, all, all of this was, was super in sync and, and tied into one another. Unexpected transformations, good fortune. Despite the centuries of superstition and misconceptions about the bat, the appearance of the bat card offers the promise of good luck, which is yeah, uh, super in sync uh, with the lux and the sevens. Right before this, I drew the Seven of Pentacles. The reality is that this shy, intelligent animal helps humans by eating insects that carry disease. Uh, some of the things mentioned here, uh, it's not that the insects carry disease, it's that the bats help with excess insects and they also help with a certain level of transmission of vibration still folk traditions associate the bat with the powers of darkness fueled by its nocturnal life and the unusual Turn the page. <laughs> and the unusual eating habits of the vampire bat. This small bat rarely harms its victims and prefers cattle to humans. Huge thunder right there. In the early AMs. Yet the vampire associated with the species has become a universal symbol of supernatural evil. Tales of the vampire or Nosferatu were spread throughout Europe by gypsies. <sighs> Once again, not, not the case. Who wanted, who warned of an undead monster that abandoned its coffin at night to prey on the unwary. If anything, the gypsies um, told uh, of the uh, ridiculousness of uh, people's ideologies they were entrapped in. This legend was popularized in Brazil. I don't know, what does that say? <laughs> I can't. In 
Brom Stroker's novel director. Okay. The gentle but the gentle bat. I'm running out of light. The gentle bat is better appreciated in Asia. The Chinese character Fu stands for both bat and happiness. And Fu Jing, a Taoist god of happiness, is represented by a bat. So the bat card. I have a lot of bat encounters. Luck, happiness. Um, a new layer and level of communication. Beyond echolocation into intuitive instant communication. Um, yeah, really tapping into the technology that is within you, the, tel the true telecommunication that is within you, tapping into your own philosopher's stone, doing the inner work and getting clear within, tapping into uh, the medicines that is already perfect in nature, all that we need to do is realize the proportions, the right timing of the plant, when and where and how, and yes, combining plants and medicines can potentiate an effect, but it always ties back into the, the mental sphere. In the realm of mentality and an inner gnosis of how that ties into the body as above with the mind so below with the earth and the body and the material getting clearer and clearer towards a perfected state, yes, but it's a perfected mentality because of this engagement, a perfected engagement. What does that look like? Does that look like living in um, spaces, uh, boxed in houses, apartment complexes where um, people aren't really very neighborly at all with their neighbors or could that potentially look like having a living garden to where the plants grow for you and offer medicine and fruits willingly offer pollens and ethers for you to breathe in and heal and thrive and live in this kind of environment a space of love, a homestead, a domain of divine engagement. Peace.